The United States is well known for many reasons. Its deep history, film and music industry, and its dozens of unique and historic monuments. The United States is one of the greatest cultural, political, and economic powers in the world. On the other hand though, America is well known for something else that is more shameful than the others. Mass shootings. In this year alone, there have been over 250 mass shootings with 27 of them being school shootings. We're not even halfway through the year yet, either. In comparison to other foreign countries, the United States is way ahead in terms of shootings by a large margin. Why is this the case, you might ask? Well, that's what I'm going to explain to you in this video. The Numbers To start off, America has an astronomically high number of guns in comparison to its population. Let's take a look at the statistics. Americans make up about 4.4% of the global population, but own 42% of the world's gun supply. Also, according to a 2015 study by Adam Lankford, a professor at the University of Alabama, from 1966 to 2012, 31% of the gunmen in mass shootings worldwide were American. Mr. Lankford found that a country's rate of gun ownership correlated with the odds they would experience a mass shooting. This relationship was true even when he excluded the United States meaning it could not be explained by some other factor. Additionally, it held when he researched homicide rates, suggesting that mass shootings were better explained by a society's access to guns than its baseline level of violence. Factors that don't correlate Now, many people are going to argue against all of this research by blaming other things that actually don't correlate. Some of these things are mental health, video games, and racial diversity. First, if mental health made the difference, then data would show that Americans have more mental health problems than other countries do. But the mental health care spending rate in the United States, the number of mental health professionals per capita, and the rate of severe mental disorders are all in line with those of other wealthy countries. A 2015 study estimated that only 4% of the American gun deaths were attributed to mental health issues. And Mr. Lankford, in an email, said countries with high suicide rates tended to have low rates of mass shootings the opposite of what you would expect if mental health problems correlated with mass shootings. Whether a population plays more or fewer video games also appears to have no impact. Americans are no more likely to play video games than people in other developed countries. Racial diversity, or other factors associated with social cohesion, also show little correlation with gun deaths. Among European countries, there is little association between immigration or other diversity metrics and the rates of gun murders or mass shootings. Violence America's gun homicide rate was 33 per million people in 2009, far exceeding the average among developed countries. In Canada and Britain, it was only 5 per million and 0.7 per million. However, these correspond with differences in gun ownership. Americans sometimes see this as an expression of deeper problems with crime, an idea implemented by a series of films portraying urban gang violence in the early 1990s. But, the United States is not actually more prone to crime than other developed countries, according to a landmark 1999 study by Franklin E. Zimmering and Gordon Hawkins of the University of California. Rather, they found American crime is simply more lethal. A New Yorker is just as likely to be robbed as a Londoner, for instance, but a New Yorker is 50 times more likely to be killed in the process. More gun ownership corresponds with more gun murders across virtually every axis among developed countries, among American states, among American towns, and cities when controlling for crime rates. Control legislation tends to reduce gun murders, according to recent analysis of 130 studies from 10 countries. This suggests that guns themselves cause the violence, or to be more specific, the abundant amount of firearms. Comparisons to other countries Skeptics of gun control sometimes point to a 2016 study from 2000 and 2014. It found that United States death rate by mass shootings were 1.5 per million people. The rate was 1.7 in Switzerland and 3.4 in Finland, suggesting American mass shootings were not actually so common. But the same study found that United States had 133 mass shootings. Finland only had two which killed 18 people, and Switzerland had one which killed 14. These are isolated incidents, so while mass shootings can happen anywhere, they are only a routine in the United States. As with any crime, the underlying risk is impossible to fully erase. Any individual can snap or become motivated by a violent ideology. What is different is the likelihood that this will lead to mass murder. In China, about a dozen seemingly random attacks on school children killed 25 people between 2010 and 2012. Most used knives, none used guns. 
By contrast, in the same window, the United States experienced five of its deadliest mass shootings, which killed 78 people. Scaled by population, the American attacks were 12 times more deadly. As with any crime, the underlying risk is impossible to fully erase. Beyond the Stats In 2013, American gun-related deaths included 21,175 suicides, 11,208 homicides, and 505 deaths caused by an accidental discharge. That same year in Japan, a country with one-third of America's population, guns were involved in only 13 deaths. This means an American citizen is about 300 times more likely to die by a gun homicide or accident than a Japanese person would. America's gun ownership rate is 150 times as high as Japan's. That gap between 150 and 300 shows that gun ownership statistics alone do not explain what makes America different. Culture is the difference. The United States also has some of the weakest controls over who can buy a gun and what kinds of guns can be owned. Switzerland has the second highest gun ownership rate of any developed country, about half of the United States. Its gun homicide rate in 2004 was 7.7 .7 per million people, unusually high in keeping with the relationship between gun ownership and murders. Still, it's a fraction of the rate of the United States. Swiss gun laws are more strict, setting a higher bar for securing and keeping a license. Also, for selling guns and the type of guns that can be owned, these laws reflect more than just tighter restrictions. They imply a different way of thinking about guns, as something that citizens must affirmatively earn the right to own. The United States is one of only three countries, along with Mexico and Guatemala, that begin with the opposite assumption, that people have the inherent right to attain guns. The main reason American regulation of gun ownership is so weak may be the fact that the trade-offs are simply given a different weight in the United States than anywhere else. After Britain had a mass shooting in 1987, the country instituted strict gun control laws. But the United States has repeatedly faced the same calculus and determined that relatively unregulated gun ownership is worth the cost to society. That choice, more than any statistic or regulation, is what most sets the United States apart. In retrospect, Sandy Hook marked the end of the US gun control debate. Dan Hodges, a British journalist, wrote in a post on Twitter a few years ago, referring to the 2012 attack that killed 20 young students at an elementary school in Connecticut. Once America decided killing children was bearable, it was over. Alright, that's it for the video. If you found it informative or interesting, supporting the channel and video would help me out a lot. Also, leave a comment on what intrigued you and if you have anything to add. That's it for this video. See ya.